Come back. I want, but, but, but I want to ask uh, John Compton's here from PwC, who hosted our first meeting. I wanted him and maybe Linda to give us a, a sort of business economic overview. We touched on some of you touched on those issues in relation to manufacturing, but perhaps John could start and then we just so what the, what the, the feeling is out there, and then we'll have some concrete suggestions about things we need to do. John. Okay, thanks, Martin. Um, one of the things that economists do and that is they, 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 they track what masters say. Um, those of you who were watching the uh, the autumn statement last Wednesday will recall that Northern Ireland got two mentions. Uh, the first was when the Chancellor said that Northern Ireland had the best recovery in terms of employment and the second one was where he said we were going to get 250 million quid uh, on Barnett consequences. The first one is actually quite interesting in the sense that we actually have had the best recovery in terms of absolute employment growth. We're way back beyond where we were at the peak before the, before the, the, before the financial uh, crisis. Um, there's no real sign that that's, it's, there's some indication that it's slowing slightly, but there's no real indication that it's about to stop. So in that sense, we're pulling back the jobs that we've lost. The thing, the thing that's slightly worrisome, and Stephen touched on it there, is we're not pulling back productivity and we're not pulling back output. Um, and if we start to salami slice that, what we're finding is that manufacturing is highly productive. Manufacturing is back where it, where it was before the financial crisis in terms of productivity. Uh, financial services, financial business services, very high levels of productivity. So there are pockets within the economy that are performing particularly well, and there are pockets within the economy that are not performing as well. It's worth looking at the, the UK in, in its wider context. There was a report a couple of years ago from the Centre for Cities which looked at clustering and it identified about 30 major clusters uh, right across GB. It didn't look at Northern Ireland. Um, everything from uh, software around Cambridge to motor racing around Dunning Park uh, to uh, advanced manufacturing and, air, and aircraft and, uh, and defence. We tried to do a little bit of an exercise in Northern Ireland and we, we came up with advanced manufacturing and we came up with aerospace and defence which alone creates a billion pounds a year. And one of the things that when we look at clusters, clusters actually, and the, the, the Republic's a very good example, where pharmaceuticals form the core of, of much of the export activity there. So the question that we have, the challenge that we face is to keep on growing the jobs but actually to pull back on the uh, Put back on the productivity, uh, and I certainly I can remember ten to twelve years ago reports coming out talking about the end of manufacturing as we know it in Northern Ireland. Well, guess what? We got we got that one wrong. Um, in terms of sentiment, I I spent a couple of days a week in London. Um, there's <coughs> there are three phenomena that don't, that we can see which are reflected in Northern Ireland. The first one is there's an attitude of business as usual. The the business community is basically saying. We can't do anything about this, so let's just get our heads down and get on with it. So we, we've not seen the the crisis that was foretold uh, that would immediately follow the, uh, the EU referendum. Business is basically said we've got to get on with it. The second the second phenomenon is that investment has become very patchy. If we look at mergers and acquisitions, the M and A market is very flat indeed. Mergers that were being strongly rumoured have now been put on hold. Not necessarily cancelled, but put on hold. And the third thing is, there's a focus on skills. Again, Stephen touched on that. Um, it's, it's retaining the skills that we've got. It's training the next generation of skills that we're going to need as the economy changes. So, And that's been reflected from what we can see pretty much across Northern Ireland. Business as usual. Uh, some issues around investment and real focus on where the skills are going to come from. Um, but there's also a growing feeling uh, in the business community in, in, in GB that we are likely to find some degree of transition. So are we going to see Article 50 invoked in the first quarter of next year, two, 24 months later, there's a hard cutoff. People are starting to talk about it. it took seven years for Canada to do a deal with the EU. Can the UK actually do these kinds of deals in 24 months all around the world? And there's a degree of a degree of scepticism that, that can be delivered, and that is fermenting a degree of confidence in the business good that there may be some form of transitional process. That in turn is reinforcing the business as usual, but but it's also reinforcing the uncertainty. 
So until we get some indication um, of what the government's position is, and it's highly unlikely we're going to see that until it's well negotiated. You're certainly not going to see it on the back of a of a, of a, of a notepad going into number ten. Uh, there's one of my cynical colleagues yesterday said, "If it was me, actually, I would have written that just to put the, just to give give the media something to talk about." Um, so really, the big challenge for us is to keep our heads down and keep going, but also to concentrate on those parts, those elements of the economy that are doing well, and try and encourage them to do better.